right, new moon in Taurus, 4th of May, may the 4th be with you, all that stuff, okay, welcome to Gemstone Tarot, here is the picture from my moon diary, that's so nice isn't it, look at that, does it acknowledge who it's by, no, okay, <laughs> new moon in Taurus, Utilise the potent energies of the new moon by planting a seed, a metaphorical or a physical one. Focus on the richness of the soil, the pure magic within the seed and the tender nurturing required for it to thrive. Okay, if you want to know more about the new moon in Taurus and the astrology of it, have a look at Barbara Goldsmith or Gregory Scott um, because they're good at that and <laughs> I really like them. And why not? You know, those are my kind of moon or Sara Verba as well, actually. Those are my sort of go to moon people, if that makes sense. So have a look at that. What I'm going to do today is we're going to dig out. Do you remember what we did for the Libra full moon? Full moon. The Ansata Tarot is coming out. 1981, me thinks. I think it kind of looks like it as well when you look at the box. Practically falling apart. Is it 1981? I think so. Yeah, look at the box. Mm. For some reason it kind of looks like it should smell of cigarettes or something, you know, with that whole kind of like everyone smoked everywhere 80s vibe. But it doesn't, it doesn't smell of cigarettes. Okay, so I'm going to pull a card for each star sign. I know. That's what I'm going to do, and we're going to look <coughs> at the new moon energies for you, and we're going to see what happens. Rock and roll, rock and roll, Valley Bobs. What do we need to know? It's all about planting seeds, so if you can think of it in terms of that, although it won't be the same for everybody, but just think of it in terms of that. This is for Aries. Oh, Aries. Okay, Aries, you get the devil. Look at that bad boy. The artwork on these cards is amazing. I just love it. Now, the devil, of course, you know, it represents Capricorn, but it, unless I'm doing a reading for someone who, where they're asking about a Capricorn or they are a Capricorn, it doesn't particularly go that way for me. But, you know, each reader is different. For me, Aries, the devil is about planting seeds of change and it's bravery as well, which Aries is famous for. I think, and I'm no astrologer, that you Chiron moved into your sign, the winded healer. And I think that was about a couple of months ago, maybe you get it for a few years and it's deep and the devil is deep too. And if you kind of look here. He's got all kinds of spears and knives and rods stuck into things, Aries. It feels like for you, before you plant a seed, you've got to make sure, and I don't know much, okay, because I've not planted much in my life. I'm not a gardener. But I have planted potatoes. And you do have to feed the soil. And the most kind of tedious part, but the most important part is making sure that you go and get all the rocks and the stones out beforehand. Don't go planting really beautiful flowers in a rocky stony bed that hasn't got any compost in it, okay? Not to get too gardening on you, Aries, but that's what I feel is the message for you. I feel like you may be trying to grow a beautiful bloom in some rotten soil okay tend to your soil aries okay taurus Ooh, that's interesting now the new moon is in your sign taurus which is especially especially potent okay we get the emperor look at that amazing card okay I think, I'm just looking, yeah, we've got Leo, we've got Aries, I think we're getting the four fixed signs really for the Emperor, we're getting, and of course we have Aries energy, it's leadership. When you've got a 
new moon in your sign and you're manifesting Taurus, it's very, very potent just for you, okay? It feels like it's just for you. Aries is number one of the zodiac. It's the kind of energy of a child whose ego is beautifully developed and they feel like the world revolves around them. Don't be afraid to feel like the world revolves around you for this period of time that this new moon is potent. Treat yourself like the emperor. Be the emperor. Embody the emperor. And take the lead. Take the lead in your own life. Take leadership. And that means fake it until you make it if you're not feeling like the leader, okay? Just get the robes on, stick the crown on your head and the rest will come, okay? Take the lead in your own life, Taurus. Oh, I like that. Let's have a look for Gemini. Oh, wow, okay. Gemini, yours just flew across the room. One moment, hopefully I won't knock the camera over. I did a private reading for somebody <laughs> halfway through. <laughs> I reached for something and it just went clunk. <laughs> but we recovered and I kept it in. Gemini, you get the Leo card of strength. Now, Gemini, cast your mind back to the 21st of January when we had a full moon, super moon lunar eclipse in Leo, okay? Something happened around that time which gave you an idea either for a business or for how to solve a problem, but mostly about starting something, okay, or having the strength to overcome something. You're planting the seeds of self-mastery and you're planting the seeds of strength and this also for you, Gemini, could signal a time when it's a really good time to start a nutritional fitness regime, okay? Check with your doctor and all that stuff about being fit enough first. But whatever that means to you, okay? It means different things to different bodies and different people. Treat your body like a temple, treat your body like a king, okay? That's what the Leo is all about. You're sowing seeds of progress, you're sowing seeds of strength literally physical strength emotional strength and mental strength and also reputational strength so in other words you want everybody to know that you're the king of this situation or the queen of this situation and in a way it's about mastering yourself being your own master okay i really like that for you gemini okay cancer really hope i'm not going to miss out a star sign Oh, cancer, that's nice. That's a lot of boobage. <laughs> Temperance. Nice card, Cancerians. Love that for you. Especially after some of the monthlies you've been getting. It feels to me like sowing the seeds of peace of mind. Coming to terms with a situation and bringing it into balance. Somehow, I mean, with temperance, so I did a daily reading for this. And it's about treating um, the imposters both the same. If you're doing law of attraction at the moment, Cancer, don't be swayed by what results you're getting, okay? So on a new moon, it's a very potent time to do any setting intentions and for asking, okay? It's really important that you become temperate in that you are not weighing up the evidence, the external evidence of a situation. You're going ahead anyway, okay? You're planting your seeds regardless. Because the things you plant now may well pop up for you around the time of Sagittarius, which is sort of November time. It feels like a long way off, but guess what? This year is zooming by and it isn't. OK, but also the biggest message is that you're kind of winning whether you know it or not. OK, so set your intentions as beautiful as you want them to be. Make your dreams as big as they are. Don't temper them to suit the evidence of what's around you. OK, especially if you're consciously creating. Oof. Leo. Leo, Leo, Leo. That's your card. Oh, Leo! 
that's really nice. Oh, my favourite card. And you get a new moon in it. You get the staff. Literally, wish for what you want. You know, new moons are times that are almost like a moon wishing well. So imagine, I don't know, I never go anywhere, so I'm trying to think of places. Is it the Trevi Fountain? Is that where you put wishes in? Make your wish and it will be granted, okay? Make sure it's pure. Make sure it's, um, what's the word? For the highest good, okay? For the highest good of all. But just more importantly, when you get the star, it's the manifesting card and it's just the message that you can, you can have what you wish for in a big, fat, major arcana way, okay? So it's a bit like winning the lottery, Leo, you know, or growing a plant. If you don't go and get the seed and put it in the soil, you can wish for what you like, but it ain't going to grow, okay? And if you don't buy a ticket for the lottery, you can have all the luck, but you're not going to manifest it. So make the wish. That's actually all you have to do is align yourself with what's good and pure and the highest good and wish for it. Reach for it. Reach for the star. OK, I love that for you, Leo. OK, Virgo. Oh, Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. Judgment. <laughs> Judgment. OK. This feels quite big for you, actually. Judgment is a card sometimes of second chances. If you want a second chance at something or you want a second chance with someone, plant your seeds for this, Virgo, OK? It also feels like... I don't know why, it's just saying it feels like an apology. So either make that apology and the apology is the seed. Oh yes, that's big. Or someone apologises to you and it plants the seeds of a new relationship. It just feels... It feels deep. This is no, you know, small fry. This is no fling. This is a karmic kind of relationship. It can be family, it can be romantic. But... It's making peace with things. It's making peace with the past. It's a, it's bigger than just a second chance, okay? It's in divine timing for you. So the seed is the apology, either how you give it or how you receive it. Wow. Oof. Libra. Ooh. Libra, you get the moon. Ooh. Ooh. This is Cancerian energy, Libra. This is also about Neptune and the mysteries and what is true and what is not. And for me, that's the question that you're going to be asking yourself but the universe is also asking it of you don't plant seeds for something that isn't truly what you want and if you don't know what you want and you are librans and there is a constant balancing act of scale it's scaling things weighing things up see if you can just come into some alignment some quiet time because the moon is an energy that can have you an, under an illusion of something. It's also a time when the greatest illusions lead to the best knowledge. You know, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, the moon. It's Cancerian energy. It rules Cancer, but it also rules Pisces. Neither of which energies you're particularly at home in, but you do understand. This is a time for you, Libra, when you're going to become the mystic, a bit like the high priestess. In other words, take on a more passive energy, a less intellectual energy. Don't try and sort through the evidence. Sit with what it is that you want and almost feel like there is some kind of 
a bit like panning for gold. You know, let the crap slip through the net and then softly after you've sat with something, see what's left and that's your seed, okay? Thank you, Libra. Scorpio, Scorpio. What a secretive card for you, Scorpio. Doesn't want to come out. Ooh. Okay. Scorpio, you get the chariot. Sudden entrances or exits. That's interesting. So for you, Scorpio, there may be what appears to be a snap decision and that is the seed that you're planting because the decision that you make around this time will have um will bear fruit later on it feels like a sudden decision but actually it's been a long time coming and it feels like this energy may take you into cancerian sun energy which is not that far off it's just a few weeks away you may wrestle with this at night this may be something that has kept you awake where you've been you know chariot energy very much is trying to control two horses one chariot and it's shadow and it's light so you may have really mixed feelings about this but in the end and i feel like you know we've got this centaur here with a bow in the end, you're just going to shoot for the target. It's going to be a sudden decision, but it was a long time coming, Scorpio. And it will be clean when you get that info, when you make that choice. You're going to, it's going to feel, what is the word? It's going to feel clean. That's the only way I can put it. Whew, Scorpio, leave me a comment, okay? And also, anyone listening, do subscribe to the channel and hit the wiggly bell. Ooh. Sagittarius, you get your own card. That is mint. I love it when that happens and no one says mint anymore for at least 20 years. Temperance, when you get your own card, this is great. I mean, it's just, it's a bit like being on a slot machine and, and, and just, you know, if you're on a slot machine, it's a long time. I used to love a slot machine at the seaside. I don't know if it's because, you know, I do psychic work or what. But if I was going to get like three cherries, I felt it as the wheel came in before it came in. This is, this is good juju. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to squirt ketchup on it. It's good juju. It's nice. It's sunny. It's bright. You're in alignment. It's a yes. It's a yes and a yes and a yes, okay? So whatever's in your mind, whichever seed you're thinking of planting, it feels like a big fat yes. So I'm just gonna give you that affirmation. It's a yes. Good on you, Sag, good on you. Everybody should have that. Capricorn, Capricorn. New moon in Taurus, energies. What seed is Capricorn? <laughs> Capricorn this is your eclipse year Capricorn and I've been saying this to my Capricorn friends okay I remember my eclipse year I remember my eclipse year okay you get the tower yep you get the tower I would say in an eclipse year you get a series of towers not just the one you get the tower baby Out goes the baby with the bathwater, with the tower. It's the breaking down of false promises and it's somewhat out of your control. I mean, this is not a card that looks like it's particularly in your control. And it's not. The eye of Horus at the top, <clears throat> the all-seeing eye. When you have an eclipse year, I often say it's like having a house renovated. They tear it down and then they rebuild it. 
and you know by the end of it you're choosing lovely wallpaper and some nice bedding and it's what taps am I going to have in my lovely bath but there's a long time where you're living in sawdust and flames and you're sowing a seed <coughs> in this environment it's still possible during an eclipse year the seeds that you sow in the darkest of circumstances reach for the light okay they do it just feels it's just not going to feel comfortable it's not going to feel easy it's going to feel for some of you a bit forced for some of you this will be the new moon energy will be you taking action it will be you planting a seed of desperate measures you know it will be um necessity is the mother of all invention but actually that push will take you somewhere it's just not comfortable but this year for you capricorn is not comfortable when you have eclipses in your sign you don't get a comfortable year it just doesn't work like that but it is productive that tower coming down you know you do get the great house at the end of it it's just a long time coming okay i think the message for you as well is the the turtle winning the race definitely okay Aquarius yay Aquarius you get strength now Aquarius last year was your eclipse year and your houses were torn down you know your houses of relationships and love and beliefs and how you earned your money and all sorts happened to Aquarians it was tough and of course this is your opposite sign of Leo they also had their eclipses you know your, your opposite signs so your kindred spirits in a way this feels like this feels like <laughs> the bit when you've won a war and you get to ride through the streets okay it feels like that's what she's doing albeit naked and on the lion you don't have to be naked and on the lion it feels slightly like a celebration and it may not be like literally oh my god it's amazing now my bank account is full and i've got the relationship i want but it definitely feels like i i survived and dodged many bullets in 2018 and now i'm just feeling like i have a lot more strength and self mastery i'm in a much better place to start manifesting I would say for you Aquarius that January didn't even feel like a start of the new year and that probably as we're coming into May you're just beginning to feel strong enough to even go looking for the pot and the compost and the packet of seeds. Before then I just think you probably were all all over the shop. So you will be feeling more together, you will be feeling stronger and it feels like you've just got your feet on the starting blocks, okay? So plant your seed tentatively and wisely and slowly and softly and then go and have a nice cup of tea okay it will grow Pisces Ooh, Pisces oh Pisces <laughs> judgment for us this came up before didn't it Pisces unavoidable revelations that's what that is. Judgment for me reminds me of, and it is the card of revelations and the kind in the biblical sense where we are called to judge. Pisces is the 12th sign of the zodiac and the dissolution of the ego and not very good at judging. 4th of May, new moon in Taurus for you Pisces, is a time when you're going to have to stand up and judge. And I know that sounds weird because normally the spiritual advice is don't be judgmental. And I suppose in the smallest sense of just, call, you know, I keep getting calling someone out. In the smallest sense of calling someone out, no, it's not about being petty and blaming people but it is about making a judgment and standing by it and blowing that trumpet loudly pisces does not like to blow a trumpet loudly they like to not blow a trumpet at all they're not the trumpet blowing kind 
but you're going to be called upon to take the bugle and to blow and to make your feelings known and in some way Pisces when you get super clear about what you want what you'll tolerate and what you won't tolerate that will sow a seed that will bear brilliant fruit wowzers okay i will be doing a reading for the collective as well as in a normal kind of weekend reading for the fourth this was just a full moon reading where i'm pulling a card for each of the signs just as a kind of supplement really and because i i like using that tarot and it's just a nice format please do subscribe to the channel check out the may readings and let me know what you think of this format leave me a comment namaste